But anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. But anyway, good to see you guys. We got a lot of ground to cover. But hey, turn to somebody and say, early bird gets the freaky message. Because this one's freaky, man. If you thought last night was cool, uh, this one's uh, something. But anyway, but it has everything to do with man, Bible prophecy, uh, and the soon coming return of Jesus Christ, which hopefully you're excited about. Uh, praise God, all none of you. But anyway, you're waking up. You're getting there. But let's get in and uh, begin in prayer. Father, we love you and thank you so much for today. And we just thank you that you've given us another opportunity uh, to get into your word. And uh, Old Testament, New Testament, as we take a look at why you judge the planet the first time. And then we're seeing a repeat of that uh, because you're going to judge the planet again a second time. And it's not by chance. And you're giving us signs that that's exactly what's taking place. So open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, God, in this study. We just pray that, uh, Lord, you give us, again, as always, ears to hear, but hearts to obey, that we'd respond appropriately, that, again, you're not going to tell us exactly when the rapture is going to happen because you know our hearts. We'd probably goof off to the very end. But because you love us, you give us many signs that it's getting close. So help us to get excited. Help us to evangelize more than ever before. Time is running out. And again, as always, as uh, uh, has already been prayed, God, we pray that if there's anybody here today or watching online that's not truly born again, save them now, God, please, by your spirit. This is not a joke. It's not a game. They don't want to be left behind, and they certainly don't want to end up in hell. So please have mercy on them if that's the case. But please bless our time. We ask all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said. Amen. Hey, that's right. We are here to talk about something exciting, just simply a minor topic. It's just simply called human hybrids in the coming chimeras. That's right. And uh, no, that's not my baby picture. That's Mark's baby picture. Sorry, bro. Uh, but anyway, don't, don't make uh, too much of it. But basically what we're going to talk about is something that I've been warned about for two years. How many guys heard of the Great Reset? Great Reset, World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab and the gang, Joe Biden's a hireling. That's what he's brought in to destroy America. That's part of his role. Uh, but I've been warned for people the Great Reset. Most Christians are starting to finally catch on that the Great Reset really is what the Bible says. One day is going to come and a global economy that's going to go cashless and it's going to be biometrically controlled with people's body parts. Okay, the mark of the beast system. That's the first half of the Great Reset. The Great Reset is an economic reset to go to a cashless global society. That's what they're bringing in. That's what the Bible warned about the Antichrist kingdom 2,000 years ago. But what I've been warning is, listen, that's only half of the same coin of the Great Reset. These guys not only want to bring in an economic reset, they want to bring in a human reset. And they literally want to turn humans into non-humans. And Schwab has admitted that their, uh, the pandemic was the trigger to start the process three years ago. And they have a goal in mind that they want it all in place, including the human reset, by 2030. This is where we're at, folks. This is what's going on. And, and again, it's not coming, folks. It's already being done. Uh, I don't have time to get into all the way that all of creation, they've already started the process of genetically modifying into something that's not God's original design. Could be with insects. They've already done that. Plants. Plants have been completely genetically modified. Wait a second. Don't we eat plants? Yeah. And then the other one they've been genetically modifying for years is animals. Wait a second. Plants and animals, that's our food supply. Does that affect us? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, and so that's what they're doing. But it isn't just plants and animals and insects, folks. I'm telling you, it is humans. Whether you want it or not, these guys, they're the elites after all, and they believe it's their duty to reset humanity into a new image. Now, believe it or not, as crazy as that sounds, they're not just doing it, but believe it or not, this is the exact same behavior that caused God to judge the planet the first time with Noah's flood. Let's take a look at why God did that. Genesis chapter 6, the classic passage dealing with the flood of Noah. Genesis 6, okay? If you find Revelation, what do you do? Close the Bible and just start all over. It's opposite side. But anyway, Genesis chapter 6. Why did God judge the planet? How many guys would say that, you know, Flooding the planet and only eight people and the animals that survived on that boat. That's kind of severe. What was God up to? What was the reason why? What caused him to do that? Well, let's take a look. And he tells us in Genesis chapter 6, says this, verse 1, When men began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, fallen angels, okay, saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. The what? The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God, fallen angels, demons, went to the daughters of men and had children by them. What? 
They were heroes of old, men of renown. And the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. And the Lord was grieved that he made man on the earth, and, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I've created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground, and the birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. Why? Because the level of evil that had arisen in that society, God said, that's it. That's my last straw. And if you look at what's going on here, why did God do that? Why did he basically hit a restart button with humanity? There was only eight people left on the whole planet, right? And all of creation uh, was wiped out except for what Noah took on the ark. There was a restart program that was going on. Why did God do that? Well, there was three things. Matthew 24, Jesus speaking about this, he says that in the days of Noah, there was an attitude. And that attitude was a very lackadaisical attitude against the coming judgment of God. Oh, eating and drinking and marrying, giving in marriage. We don't see that today, do we? Are you kidding me? That's everywhere. So that's a repeat. And again, what's the point? Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So Jesus tells us you're going to see a repeat of the days of Noah type behavior as a sign that he's getting ready to come back to judge the planet again. Now that was Matthew 24. Genesis 6 gives us two other sins that were going on there that God says, that's it, I've had it, I'm judging the planet. I'm starting all over again. The second one we saw there is the heart of man was thinking continually evil all the time. Good thing that's not here. That's everywhere, folks. Everywhere is just evil. You can't escape it. It's everywhere, right? But it's that third one that people want to skip over and go like, well, that's kind of freaky. Let's keep going, Bob, right? It's that Nephilim issue. You got, and basically what's going on is mankind was being hybridized out into something that was non-human. The Bible calls it Nephil in the Hebrew, Nephilim, men of renown, you know, some translations, but it literally means giants. You, you basically, you got something that's non-human now. You got a hybrid going on, a hybridization. And it's a good thing that that's not happening today. This is what Klaus and the gang are doing. They are doing it again, just like the days of Noah, just like Jesus warned. All three of those sins that caused God to judge the planet the first time are being repeated, just like Jesus said would happen before he came back. The hybridization of humanity is happening again. Now, for proof that Klaus and the gang really are having a goal to not just modify and change insects and animals and plants, but humans. Here they are. Here's his science advisor, a guy named Yavol Noah Harari. And in total blasphemy and, and mockery of God, they not only say that they're the new gods now, but they say, we don't need Jesus Christ, right? Watch what he says. It's on tape. God is dead, according to the World Economic Forum, who have also declared that Jesus is fake news and that WEF leaders have acquired divine powers to rule over humanity. According to the WEF, a new one world religion has arrived and it unites all of humanity in worshipping at the altar of climate science, techno-communism and eugenics. If you find it hard to believe Klaus Schwab's WEF would go this far, you clearly haven't been paying attention to developments in recent times. Klaus Schwab's right-hand man, Yuval Noah Harari, has announced that the WEF has been so successful in its plans that it's acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. The blasphemy doesn't stop there. Harari also promises that the WEF will turn humans into gods. Developing even bigger powers than ever before, we are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. The WEF is also increasingly hostile to Christianity and other major religions. If you read between the lines just a little, it's clear that the WEF is consciously attempting to supplant Jesus. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Humans are now hackable animals. We don't need to wait for Jesus Christ to come back to earth in order to overcome death. A couple of geeks in a laboratory can do it. I'll stand over here while the lightning bolt gets you. <laughs> Complete blasphemy, mockery of God. But what do you say? They're the new gods now. We can hack humans just like we've hacked insects and animals and plants. And that is the plan. And their plan is to turn us into something that is, by their words, non-human. 
what is this? This is a repeat of the days of Noah, folks. Exactly like Jesus said would happen. All three are happening. Now, I want to break it down for you and prove that to you. And the first way we know that these guys are basically inviting God's judgment again to the whole plan is they are crispering humans, right? And so what that means is they're putting them in a deep fryer, Bob. And that's what, No, that deep fryers do make things crispy, but that's crispy. This is crisper. Okay, CRISPR, for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with that, this is a technology, a genetic technology that came out in 2012. Okay, but listen to what this technology can do to all of life, including humans. Watch this. CRISPR is an acronym. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. CRISPR is a biological tool that can be used to edit genes. Think of it like a biological pair of scissors that can cut DNA, but also has a component that can insert DNA. Gene editing can now be done in ways that used to be really difficult, or if not, impossible before. So this CRISPR tool can quickly and efficiently tweak almost any gene in any plant or animal. Researchers already have used it to fix genetic diseases in animals, to combat viruses, and to sterilize malaria-causing mosquitoes. They've also been used to prepare pig organs for human transplants, or to create glowing animals including dogs, cats and rabbits. The CRISPR tool was first described in 2012, and since then, there's been a massive realization of how powerful this tool is. CRISPR has so much power that there have been calls to be careful on how humans use it. It's super low cost and can be done by researchers or even someone in their backyard garage. Did you catch that? Even by somebody in their backyard garage. No, it's garage for those in America. But anyway, uh, what? Th that's what Yuval Noah Harari said. We don't need Jesus Christ anymore in mockery. A couple geeks in the laboratory can do it. That's how commonplace being able to genetically modify all of life, including yourself if you want to, uh, it is. But what are you doing? You're editing a person. CRISPR basically allows you to slice and dice not just human DNA, but any DNA. You could take a piece out. You could pop a piece in. You could do whatever. You can mix and match. But then the problem is that means you're forever changed. You're completely off script from what God originally designed. It changes everything all down the line. And the problem is this isn't just a, a, a technology. It's what? It's Hitler on steroids, right? This is eugenics. Can you imagine if Hitler had this technology? He'd go nuts with it. Now, of course, they don't call themselves eugenists because that's still got a bad moniker. You know what the term is? They call themselves, I'm not joking, nugenists. I thought for sure they'd scramble it up a little bit better than that. But it's crazy, folks. It's nugenics. And again, it's not just coming, folks. It's already being done starting with babies, they're already crispering babies, okay? Watch this, this is crazy. Can we expect a future of gene-edited designer babies? Do we want one? In October of 2018, two seemingly healthy babies were born in China. There was something different about them. Nana and Lulu were the world's first gene-edited babies. A scientist, He Jiangkui, had used the gene-editing technique CRISPR-Cas9 to alter their DNA when they were embryos. He targeted a gene, called CCR5, with the goal of making them resistant to HIV. Gene editing could be used to wipe out diseases, but it could also be used to augment humans, altering intelligence, athletic ability, vision, appearance, and more. This could forever change what it means to be human. What did you say? Change how long? Because these are irreversible changes. Forever what it means to be human. What's that mean? You're not a human anymore. W what is this, folks? A repeat of the days of Noah. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Mankind is being hybridized out. And what's sick about these sickos? They're doing with babies. Babies can't resist. Babies just go along with it. Babies can't resist any of this. This is sick. And if you don't think that God is going to hold these people accountable, you're fooling yourself. But they pitch it as the greatest thing. See, if we CRISPR these babies and we genetically modify them, okay, so they're not human anymore, but uh, hey, they won't get a disease, maybe down the road, whatever. And they're doing the same thing now for adults. Because you're like, well, hey, man, that's amazing. Maybe you could slice out any potency, uh, potency to get a, a cancer or HIV and all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, but that's, what about the rest of us who've already made it outside the womb as adults? Too bad we can't be CRISPR too. Well, they're pitching that too. They're willing to now genetically modify you uh, as an adult. And it's not coming, folks. It's already 
being done. Watch this. Chinese scientists are about to become the first in the world to inject people with genetically modified cells using a special gene editing process. Starting next month, the team of scientists plans on testing the cells they edit in patients with incurable lung cancer who haven't responded to other treatments. It's called CRISPR, and it works like a text editor of sorts. The technique manipulates DNA by cutting certain sections and then adding new sequences or removing them altogether. And it's not much of a surprise, China wanted to get a jump on human CRISPR experimentation. It's the first in this area pretty regularly. It had the first CRISPR edited human embryos and the first CRISPR edited monkeys. A similar experiment was approved recently in the US. In that experiment, scientists are also hoping to get the immune system to fight cancer cells, but the experiment in China will still be the first. There have been a lot of ethical and safety concerns surrounding this type of gene editing. In 2015, a group of scientists published a letter in Nature warning against editing the kinds of genetic code that gets passed on. You know, like God said, don't do. But this is what they're doing. And notice it's not just China, it's where? In the US. Every major developed country, folks, has been doing this. It's not coming, has been doing this for a long time. CRISPR came out in 2012, right? And that's just what they'll admit, what you've been doing for a long time. But again, not just with the babies, but with the adults, it's the same rationale. If you let us genetically modify you, okay, yeah, you're not a human anymore, but hey, there's gonna be some great side benefits. And I quote, here's how they pitch it. Super intelligent humans are coming. Genetic engineering will one day create the smartest humans who have ever lived. Variations in human DNA, which if combined in the ideal fashion, could lead to, watch this, individuals with intelligence that is higher than has ever existed on Earth. Crudely speaking, we're talking about IQs on the order of 1,000. Now, a genius is considered a genius at 160. These guys say we can genetically modify the human brain and crank it up to 1,000? And they say this, uh, this could lead to an inequality of a kind never before experienced in human history. Uh, turn to somebody and say, well, duh, right? And here's the reality, right? This is how they pitch it. See, we'll, we'll give you this called the three supers. We'll give you super intelligence. We'll give you super longevity. You don't need Jesus. We'll keep you alive forever. False immortality. And then we'll give you super health. You'll never get a disease again and all this stuff. Let us just modify into something non-human. And there's a couple payoffs, now, first of all, if you think that you and I, would, or the average Joe, would ever get these upgrades, certainly an IQ of 1,000, if you, if you think that, raise your hand. Okay, praise God, because that would be showing your low IQ, because you know, I mean, even if these guys are able to pull this off, they're going to reserve the best stuff for them, right? And I don't have time to get into it, but their plan is, for those who uh, remain, they are going to genetically modify us, basically, to be better brute beasts, to better serve them, the elites. This is their version of utopia. This is the great reset. Not just an economic reset, it's a human reset. It's a repeat of the days of Noah. And God is gonna judge this planet. Now, if you've been paying attention to a couple of those videos, there's a term that they use to describe this because they can't say, hey, we're here to create the Nephilim again. We're gonna make humans into non-humans. No, people would freak out, it's too obvious. So again, these guys are masters of relabeling things. And so I wanna give you a couple buzzwords because it's in print everywhere. And so what they call this, changing humans into non-humans, they call it augmented humanity. Another term is human 2.0. It's like an upgrade. How many people, young people that you know, that would do a human 2.0 upgrade? I mean, everybody's used to upgrading your phone. It's just automatic procedure. And now, why not upgrade yourself to be like Captain America or somebody like that? That's what, how they're pitching it. Another one is basically post-human species. What's that? You're not a human anymore. So remember those three words. And again, what they're doing is they admit uh, that it is coming. And this is an article from them. And a quote, augmented humanity will disrupt leadership. Are you prepared? What, what's augmented humanity? Mankind, no longer mankind. That's what it means. It's in print. It's, they're not even hiding it, folks. They just changed the label, right, to make it more uh, palatable. Okay, but here they are pitching it that unless you allow us and go along with our plan to make humans into non-humans, uh, we won't be able to save the planet. We've got to do this to save the planet. And the irony is, no, you're going to cause God to judge the planet, but that's how they pitch it. But watch this. This is crazy. After all, a war in which CRISPR augmented super soldiers face off against standard humans hardly seems like a fair fight. Unequal access is also a concern. 
Today, affluent families can afford private schools, training, tools, equipment and opportunities to set their children up for success. What if wealthy parents could not only buy the best schooling available, but also pay to boost their child's intelligence and athletic ability, all while limiting their susceptibility to injury and illness? The divide between the rich and the poor could become even more pronounced, limiting potential for upward mobility and creating clear genetic differences between classes. A brave new world, indeed. On the other hand, couldn't we all potentially reap the benefits from advances made by augmented humans? Humans with enhanced intelligence could be better able to cure cancer, solve the problem of aging, and address our economic and environmental woes. If the augmented were to solve some of humanity's grand challenges, it would improve the lives of all humans, augmented or not. By delaying augmented humans, we could unintentionally delay solutions to pressing problems facing humanity, perhaps even until it's too late. Do you see? Do you feel the urgency? If we do not modify humans into something non-human, the planet's going to blow up. And don't you care about that? This is sick, folks, is what it is. What they're doing, again, is inviting the judgment of God. And you might be thinking, well, listen, I'm never going to let these guys get their hands on my baby, right? You ain't going to genetically modify my kids. And I'm never going to sign up and let you guys genetically modify me as an adult outside the womb. Well, folks, I'm telling you, just like they said, genetic modification abilities is commonplace. I'm not joking. You could actually get a kit online to genetically modify yourselves for 150 bucks. Watch this. This is nuts. When you think of the genetic engineering that's happening in the world today, you probably imagine it happening at a university or a big biotechnology firm full of people in white lab coats using sophisticated and expensive equipment to do the complex and delicate work of gene editing. For most people, this is probably a pretty reassuring image. It's all so professional and well-regulated, right? Well, as it turns out, there is a do-it-yourself gene therapy kit available online that allows you to edit genomes at home. Until recently, editing DNA required sophisticated labs, years of experience, and several thousands of dollars. But with the breakthrough of a genetic engineering tool called CRISPR-Cas9, that is not only fast, but also cheap and relatively easy, gene editing has entered a new era. Now, you can order a DIY genetic engineering home lab kit for just under $150 that allows anyone to re-engineer DNA in surprising ways. What? I can order a cheap kit to genetically modify myself? This is, this is the level it's got. So it isn't just, oh, they're going to try to get my kids. I'm never going to, hey, you got to sign up and go to their CRISPR laboratory. No, you can order the kit and do it yourself at home. And how many people do you know who don't know Christ would think this is the next step, man? This is awesome. Upgrade our technology, upgrade our phones. Why not upgrade? That makes sense. This is what's going on, folks. And again, what did Yuval Noah Harari say? He said, and I quote, we don't need to wait for Jesus Christ to come back to earth in order to overcome death. A couple geeks in the laboratory can do it for less than 150 bucks. This is the world that we're dealing with here. Now, here's what they're not telling you, of course, because they're a bunch of liars and they're working for Satan and they're inviting God's judgment. But this CRISPR technology, I've got these same geneticists on tape and they admit, <laughs> nervous laughter, that they, they go, okay, yeah, so now we have the ability with CRISPR technology, we can slice and dice the DNA like a, editing the film, uh, a film strip. If I don't like that scene, I just take it out and then I splice it back together. That's basically CRISPR in a nutshell. But what they admit is, okay, so we can take out a gene that uh, could show signs down the road of developing into cancer or whatever, Okay, but the problem is this. And see, that's where they stop. They say, well, see, we can get rid of cancer. The problem is this, what, and this is what they admit on tape. The problem is the genetic code that God designed is so complex, they even admit this, that what they're realizing is, yes, maybe that one gene that we took out was going to later, because of the fall of man, turn into cancer, but it's so complex that one gene also carried 13 other positive traits that you need, but we just took it out and you can't put it back. What's that going to do to people? See, that's the other side that they're not telling you. There's a huge danger when you start tweaking with God's design, as you can see here. With all the hubbub about CRISPR in the news, it may feel like using it to pick your kid's eye color is just around the corner. 
But this seemingly miraculous gene editing technology may not actually be as simple or as safe as we thought. CRISPR permanently alters your genome. Several new studies released in the last few months suggest that we need to be more cautious when editing the human genome. Two of these studies found that when CRISPR performs its hallmark trick and cuts DNA, that damage can kill the cell or make it stop growing. CRISPR modifications are also less likely to kill cells that have a defective version of a gene called P53. P53 plays a role in preventing the onset of cancer by regulating a cell's life cycle, so by leaving more of the defective cells alive than healthy ones, CRISPR may be inadvertently raising the risk of cancer in that patient, which is like the opposite of the goal. And we haven't even gotten to the most recent study that raises concerns. Up until now, CRISPR-Cas9's cutting function has been accurate in the specific area of interest, the spot in the DNA that's supposed to be cut. But that's because researchers were only looking for mutations caused by CRISPR in the immediate vicinity of the cut. New research reveals that in about 20% of cells, CRISPR results in much larger deletions than we thought, up to more than 100 base pairs. Researchers didn't notice this before because they were looking for harmful mutations and didn't see any, but that's because the entire region was gone. Oops, <laughs> I can't put it back either. Sorry, non-human. This is what they're doing. I'll, get, I'll give you a visual, and this is based on even what they admit, but they're still marching forward as the new gods now, doing it anyway. It's like uh, we have the, one of the, the most complex machines that man has ever built. Like God has built our bodies more complex than that. But one of the most complex is the space shuttle. Very complex. And then years and years worth of training, you have to use humans who use their intelligence to fly the space shuttle. And then you hopefully it doesn't blow up and something whatever, but that, that's the process. So somebody engineered it and somebody with intelligence has to steer it. How well would it go if you put, you just a couple random, no training whatsoever, you put a couple monkeys in the two seats in the space shuttle? How well would it go? This is what they're doing with tampering with human DNA, any DNA. It's like a couple monkeys going at it because it's so complex. And they even admit it. And not only admit it, I'm going to share with you an interview. This is from Jennifer Doudna. She's one of the co-inventors of CRISPR back in 2012 when it came out. And she not only admits on tape that when she invented this, all of a sudden, that night, she has a dream of Hitler coming to her. I would take that as a warning from God. Then she not only admits that, ah, who cares? We're going to do it anyway. But she even admits that, yes, this will turn humans into non-humans. Watch this, this is crazy. Are designer babies with enhanced intelligence or strength just around the corner? The technology that makes this important conversation possible is called CRISPR, a revolutionary gene editing tool that allows uh, scientists to make precise changes to the DNA in any cell or organism. So fairly early on in the development of the CRISPR technology, I had a dream in which a scientist was introducing me to a man in a, in a dark room. And when that man turned around, it was Adolf Hitler asking me to describe to him how the CRISPR technology worked and tell him how it could be useful. And uh, I woke up from that dream with a, a real start, and that was one of the things that motivated me to begin discussing publicly the implications. At the same time, over the last few years, I've come to feel that the greatest problem may be fear itself. I think that it's very important to understand that the CRISPR technology has the potential to do many beneficial things for society, and to reject that technology because we are uncertain about the way it may be used in the future, I think would be a, a mistake. One of the reasons scientists are so excited about the CRISPR technology is that it can be used to correct mutations that cause genetic disease like cystic fibrosis or Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Gene editing can also be used in the germline, that means in eggs or sperm or embryos, and when changes are made to DNA in those cells, the trait can be passed on to all of their future descendants. So it gives us now uh, the power to change the very nature of what makes us human. What's she just a minute? I mean, that, this, this is a mouthful. She invents this to genetically modify the human DNA, this technology CRISPR, and then she has a dream about Hitler. It freaks her out. 
I take that as a warning from God. You better stop it. Don't let this out because this is Hitler's dream on steroids, eugenics. And, and you're going to let the cat out of the bag. Don't do it. She not only says, nah, who cares? Does it anyway. But she admits it's what? Forever changes the germline, which basically means humanity moving forward into something that's not human. Now, as weird as this is, folks, why am I talking about this? Because this is the same behavior, Genesis 6, that went on and caused God to judge the planet the first time. The hybridization of humanity. It's being repeated, whether we want it or not. We're all distracted. And these guys, the great reset from Klaus and the gang, it isn't just economic, it's a human reset. And as creepy as that is, that's just the first alarming thing that they're doing. The second thing that they're doing, and it's inviting the judgment of God again, is this, chimeric humans. They're mixing and matching us, not just slicing and dicing the DNA, but with animals, not coming, already being done. And there's a reason why I picked that picture with the guy with the pig nose. Because that's what, in another interview, when Jennifer Doudna is talking about the dream that freaked her out with Hitler, she said it wasn't just Hitler coming to her, but it was Hitler with a pig nose. Because this is the other part. They don't want to just slice and dice our DNA. They want to mix it and match it with all kinds of things, including animals. Now you're really not a human. And folks, this has been going on for a long time. Let me just prove that for you. This is still in print. I challenge you to look it up. Okay, they're not hiding it, but it says here, quote, one, and this was in 2011. 2011. And in 2011, quote, 150 human-animal hybrids were already grown in UK labs. And I quote, the hybrids have been produced secretly over the past three years. So do the math. That means it was in 2008. By researchers looking into possible cures for a wide range of diseases. The creation of a variety of hybrids known as cybrids when an animal egg is fertilized by a human sperm or a chimera when a human nucleus is implanted into an animal cell or human cells are mixed with animal embryos. And this is their words, not mine. Ethically, it's dabbling in the grotesque. You're inviting the judgment of God. And listen to this. A group of leading scientists warned about these, and I quote, planet of ape experiments. Wait a second. Didn't they just reboot that? Remember the Charlton Heston, the version in the 70s? Why are they rebooting that? And there literally is another one coming out. Are you preparing us for something? They called for new rules to prevent lab animals being given human attributes, for example, by injecting human stem cells into the brains of a primate, which is the planet of the ape scenario. This is really going on. Quote, they say it's going to lead to a scenario in which work on human animal creations goes too far. Shocker. And here's the reason why. Man-human-animal hybrids have also been created in many other countries which have little or no regulation. In other words, it's happening all over the place, and there's nothing we could do to stop it. And they say this. Why? Here's the rationale, because, you know, that's freaky. Why would you do that? Same thing that they pitch with the CRISPR babies, CRISPR adults, all that stuff. If we do this, if we combine humans and now with animals, we'll be able to cure all kinds of diseases and get rid of the organ donor shortage crisis around the whole world. And again, they have new terms, right? Because you can't just sh show up and again say, hey, we're going to create you into a bunch of non-humans and then we're going to cram you full of animal DNA. That would kind of freak people out. So again, they have buzzwords, just like we saw if they want to say that you're not a human anymore, they don't call us Nephilim like the Bible calls it. Genesis 6, they say augmented humanity, human 2.0 or post-human species. Same thing when it comes to this. Here's their terms, and this is in print. You see this in print, this is what they're talking about. Combining humans with animals. And I quote, they're known as flat out human-animal hybrids, chimeras, cybrids, human-animal uh, 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 parahumans. And this one's from Japan. This was in 2019. Japan approves scientists' plan to create the world's first what? Humanimals. What is that? It ain't a human anymore, that's for sure. What is this? Why are we talking about this? Because as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be at the coming of the Son of Man. When you see the days of Noah being repeated, Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back to judge the planet again. It's happening, folks. Well, we're all distracted. What about the economy, the election, whatever? And all this is going on whether we want it or not. 
Okay? And as crazy as it sounds, let me give you a couple of these human-animal concoctions that have already been done. Watch this. Scientists around the world are at work creating real half-human, half-animal hybrids. It may sound like something out of a science fiction, but combining human DNA with animal DNA is no longer a thing of movies. The Rabbit Man Grown in a Dish The first successful human-animal hybrid was developed in a laboratory dish in Shanghai, China in 2003. A team of ambitious scientists joined human cells into rabbit eggs to create embryos of a new creature that was half rabbit and half human. They may have been the first to succeed, but they were certainly not the first to try it. Scientists in the United States had also been trying to make animal-human hybrids of their own. But can you imagine what a human with bunny ears might have looked like? The mouse with a human ear. Back in 1997, a team of Harvard and MIT scientists bioengineered a mouse with a human ear on its back. The scientists placed a biodegradable scaffolding in the shape of a human ear inside the mouse. The scaffolding was then slowly absorbed by the mouse's body and turned into an actual biological human ear consisting of actual cartilage and flesh, goats and cows that lactate human milk. Back in 2009, a group of Russian and Belarusian scientists genetically modified goats to produce human breast milk. Their ultimate goal was to harvest human breast milk on assembly line, sure that people would flock to their local grocery stores for the chance to buy a bottle for their family. The Russian team even advertised that its human milk would make delicious cheese. And they weren't the only ones to somewhat succeed at their experiment. Shortly after their success, a group of Chinese scientists went on to make a whole herd of 300 cattle that produced human milk, mice with human brains. It's one thing to put a human ear on a mouse's back, but in 2014, a team of researchers decided to seriously blur the line between human and animal by giving mice millions of human brain cells. The researchers replaced almost every single cell in the mice's brains with human cells, leaving only the original mouse neurons intact. Once inside, the human cells almost completely took over the mouse brains, and within a year, their glial cells had been completely replaced by human brain cells. Not coming, already been done, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Pick an animal, pick a human-animal combination, they've probably already done it. It's no joke. Now listen to how they pitch this, right? This is supposed to be something really good, right? And I'll get back to the why they put in, why are they put in human brain cells inside of mice. But they say this, humanity might someday meddle in other creatures on this planet and bestow upon them, animals, the gift of full sapience. That is the ability to argue, ponder, store information, appraise, discuss, create, express, and manipulate tools so that they, listen, because you got to save the planet, so that they can join us in the problematic task of being worthy planetary managers. I mean, what's wrong with lending a hand to others across nature's chasm so they can, listen, they can join us in building starships? Novels portray a future in which sapient dolphins and apes serve on our councils and offer their own styles of wisdom, art, and insight, enriching Earth civilization that is, quote, no longer only human. In fact, the scientists are not only putting human brain cells to increase the IQ into mice, they're also giving them the human speech gene that enables them to learn faster and easier for them to speak. This was almost 10 years ago. It's still in print. It's an attractive outcome, but the path to get there is fraught with dangers and moral hazards. <laughs> What's to stop someone from doing this? Uh, God. What do you mean? Now you're going to try to get animals to not just have the intelligence of a human, to, but to speak like a human? What is this, Dr. Doolittle on steroids? This is what they're up to, folks. It's a repeat of the days of Noah. But is it going to go well? No. Just, just like CRISPR, man, ain't good. Neither is this. Some people are blowing the whistle on it. Watch this. We're in an age of wonders, of awesome scientific revolution. The reality is that any day now, we'll be eating super salmon, the first genetically modified creatures approved for human consumption. And of course, modified plants like soybeans are already on the menu. But the revolution doesn't end there. Scientists can now re-engineer our lives in ways you never thought possible. Most controversially of all, they have the power to create designer animals with organs specifically for human transplants. So prepare to be amazed and maybe just a little bit afraid. Sometimes you just got to say no to certain technologies. Just because it can be done doesn't mean that it should be done. And with these salmon, I'm telling you, it shouldn't be done and they should never be released into our oceans and into our rivers. 
Washington lawyer and scientist Andrew Kimbrell is one of America's most outspoken campaigners against genetic engineering. These genetically engineered crops and fish can cause new allergies, they can lower the nutrition in the food, they can cause toxicological responses. Food that was formerly safe can now become toxic. We've never done any long-term testing on these foods, and yet we've let them into our supermarkets and we're feeding millions of people this food. It's in America that much of the genetic revolution is now taking place. And it's happening in the most unlikely locations. So how many pigs have you got in the program? We've got about 200 pigs on the farm, and of those, about now 100 of them are clones. From this isolated farm in rural Virginia, Dr. David Ayres is pioneering genetic research he believes will revolutionise food production, medicine, and even warfare. This is one of our cloned babies for our xenotransplantation product. What a little beauty. This little piggy is a very special little piggy. It's been genetically engineered to make its organs suitable for transplantation into humans. Genes that would normally cause organ rejection by the human body have been removed from the DNA of these pigs. And human genes have been added to further improve compatibility. So, in effect, these pigs are part human. We have the opportunity to you know, turn the transplant field on its head and you know, solve the, the organ shortage crisis. We've got 80,000 people you know, waiting on uh, organ lists, dying waiting for those organs. We have the chance to have an unlimited supply. But while trial transplants into baboons have begun, there's serious concerns about the health risks these organs might pose. There's already evidence that benign viruses which exist naturally in pigs could be transferred to humans with catastrophic consequences. We know this is how AIDS was created. We know that almost all these terrible flus, SARS that we just went through, uh, swine flu, uh, avian flu, mad cow disease. We know these diseases, many of which we cannot e e even detect, go from animals to humans. And now the, the brilliant idea is to take these organs and put them directly into humans. If you want to have a, a, a good guess, a good gamble on when the next, where the next plague is coming from, it will come from xenotransplantation. Despite all the assurances, genetically modified animals have made it into the food chain. So far, none with exotic viruses, but certainly some pigs and possibly other animals with human genes have slipped through. It is very probable that somewhere in America right now, hopefully not the person you're looking at, uh, has already consumed an animal with human genes in it. And again, really? Yes. So a sausage on the barbecue could well contain human genes? Could have human genes in it. Absolutely right. Hot dogs. Eat them because they taste so good. But what's in them is not so good. You know, we've learned to accept it, but I don't know if you'll feel so accepting after this. The company Clear Foods recently analyzed 345 hot dog and sausage products from 75 brands and retailers and found... Are you hot dog lovers ready for this? Human DNA in 2% of the samples and in two-thirds of the vegetarian samples. Was this a new way to get us to do cannibalism? This is in the news. And we just move on to the next news cycle and say, well, how's the economy? Who's going to win the election? 2% is bad enough. But notice the high percentage, two-thirds of every one of the vegetarian ones. Why are they pushing that agenda beyond meat, all this meat? Is it really good for you? No. Who knows what's in there? But they're getting you to eat it. So what would happen if we start eating genetically modified stuff, including food stuff that's got human de What would that do to us? I've interviewed geneticists, and they admit, you keep that up, you will be altered genetically. But how far can this go, and you're no longer human? I'll get to that in a second. But they also admit there's another danger going on with this technology. They admit that if we keep this up, it goes both ways. It's not just all the diseases that were in that pig, since you just took that part and put it in the human, can now spread through humans, and that's a pandemic scenario on steroids, but they also admit that uh, it goes the other way. 
because you're injecting human genes into that pig, what if it goes elsewhere in the body, and the next thing you know, you got a human brain trapped inside of a pig? On tape, watch this. The scientists can't yet control exactly what happens to the human cells once they implant them into the pig embryo. There is a possibility that these human stem cells could grow into neurons and accidentally create a human mind trapped in a pig. To date, everything the researchers have done is legal, but what they're doing is highly controversial. Bioethicists say this research raises a lot of uneasy questions. The boundaries between what it means to be human and what it means to be non-human uh, can become quite blurred. Now, again, this is like, this is the freakiest Bible study I've ever attended. And it is freaky. But why are we dealing with this? It has everything to do with Bible prophecy. Why did God judge the planet the first time in Noah's flood? Scripture is very clear. Mankind got so evil, they were hybridizing mankind out. And they almost made it, except for eight people. And God had to hit a restart button and do it all over again. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, it's going to happen again, unfortunately. And he's going to come back and judge the planet again. It's happening. In fact, watch this. Human brain inside of a pig, watch this. Thanks to dramatic enhances of genetic technology, we've gotten to the point where it's literally possible for even college students to create new hybrid life forms in their basement. Again, like you've all know who I said. Unfortunately, our laws have not kept pace with these advances, and now Pandora's box has been opened, and it's going to be nearly impossible to shut it again. Furthermore, it's the uncertainty that makes all this work so controversial. Scientists conducting these experiments can't know exactly, listen, where the human stem cells go. They could go elsewhere like the brain. And when you give animals partly human brains, you will have animals that might actually develop consciousness like a human. In fact, it might even develop human-type needs, direct quote, we don't really know. And what would we call these animals that have brains that are now mostly human? And at what point would our relationship with such creatures fundamentally change? Quote, that is when they learn to talk. Scientists all over the planet are recklessly creating these chimeras without really thinking through the implications. And it's happening, listen, all over the world every single day. And most people haven't even heard about it. Quote, it's not only going to, and this is from them, direct quote, it's not only going to permanently change what it means to be human, but as the DNA of the human race becomes corrupted, it's easy to imagine a future where there are, quote, very few pure humans remaining. What is this? The days of Noah are being repeated, just in time for the return of Jesus Christ. And again, so that's the elephant in the room. Wait a second. How far can you be genetically modified and technically, scientifically, you're no longer a human? Well, I interviewed a geneticist in the field in one of our documentaries. And here's what she came up with. Watch this. And so at what point have you changed so much right. that you're now a different species? Well, and that's the proverbial question. And that does come out throughout this whole uh, study. And I quote repeatedly as I came across it on video and in print. These people keep saying... How far can you go with this technology on humans? And you're no longer even a human. But to use their own analogy against them, so to speak, 99%, 98% humans, chimps, well, there's the proverbial number. How far can you go being genetically modified and you're not a human anymore? Just right. like a human is not an ape. Right. It's what? Do the math. It's 1%. 1%. So technically, following their rule of what we could verify, a human is not a chimp and a chimp is not a human, if you get changed 1%, theoretically, you're not a human anymore. Right, which is scary. Yeah. But they're doing it anyway. Not 50%. Not 51. 1%. And how much is mankind being genetically modified against their will? Not just in the food supply. What about the COVID jab? Did you see the interview just two weeks ago from Tucker Carlson Network, his new network? They kicked him off of Fox. Wonder why. He's interviewing 
Check it out, folks. TCN, Tucker Carlson Network. He's interviewing the Surgeon General of Florida who is calling for an absolute, complete, immediate halt of any vaccine from COVID-related whatever. He says, and this is from the Surgeon General of Florida, because anyone who got that shot, you were genetically modified. It's on tape. You sneaky boogers. You satanic mass murderers. You sickos working for Satan. How dare you as the elites genetically modify somebody against their will? This is Hitler on steroids. And if you chase down Klaus's history, he grew up in Hitler's world and his dad was buddies with the Nazis. Wonder where he got this idea. But why are we talking about this? Because, folks, it has everything to do, believe it or not, with a sign that our departure is getting near. Jesus said this, Matthew 24, 37, as it was in the days of who? Noah. Noah. So it might be? No, it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. You're going to see a repeat of the days of Noah. Not just a lackadaisical attitude towards the coming judgment of God, scoffing. Come on, man. I got a job to do. You guys are one of those wackos. I'm not listening to you. Mankind was continually thinking evil all the time. Not just that. It's what? What? You mean to tell me there would become a danger of mankind once again being hybridized out again into something non-human? It literally is happening right now. And that's why Jesus said, when these things begin to take place, freak out, run to the hills, hide, never eat a hot dog again. Well, me personally, I'm not going to eat hot dogs. But what's he say? Stand up, man. Lift up your heads, redemption draws near. All this is, is simply a reminder from God. Christian, look up. Today could be the day. This is why we're getting out of here. Because God is coming to punish these people. He's going to pour out his wrath on these wicked, rebellious people tweaking his creation, all of it, not just humanity, and he's going to smash them for it. But because we're saved from his wrath through Jesus Christ, we're out of here. But what do we do? Just sit on our fire insurance? No, we get out there and we tell people, hey, you need to get saved today. You need to turn to Jesus right now. This is not a joke. This planet is about to blow up. And here's the good news. There's one way. Just like in Noah's day, there was one boat, one door, one way, one ark. It was made of wood. The ark today is also made of wood. It's just a cross this time. But it's the same scenario. There's one way out of this mess, and it's Jesus Christ. If you're not saved, you need to get saved now. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for our study today. And we just pray that God, as always, as your church, that we would respond appropriately. As as freaky as this is, it's just another sign from you that our departure is near. So help us to get even more excited and to be more responsible as your people. If we have an ounce of compassion, we would be telling as many people as we can how to get off this place before it's too late. Because what is coming is not just a one-world government, a one-world religion, a cashless economy, a mark of the beast system. These guys are repeating the sin of Noah. They're, They're tweaking all of your creation, God, into something that is off the original design, including humans. God, please help us to be the greatest evangelists this generation of Christians have ever seen. And God, as always, if there's anybody even here now that's not truly saved, please save them now. May they cry out to you, Jesus, and ask you to forgive them of all their sins. May they confess you as Lord, believe in their heart that you, God, raised Jesus from the grave. Because you tell us if we do that, we will be saved. But thank you for the study. Please bless it to these lives that belong to you. We ask all this in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.